Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today we're going to be discussing U.S. Oncology and McKesson. Now, U.S. Oncology is the specific name of a subsidiary of McKesson. Now, it is the largest network of community oncologists, in other words, cancer doctors, in America. So, community has a specific term in healthcare, and it means that it's essentially a non-academic physician. So in other words, it's in a hospital, typically it could be in a city or a suburbs or a rural area, but it's not associated with a university uh, or a medical school. Okay, so they all have local names. So all of these different oncology practices are not called U.S. Oncology. They're called Affiliated Oncology, which is in Illinois, or Blue Ridge Oncology, which is in like Virginia and Kentucky. And guess what? If you go to the U.S. Oncology website, there are 47 pages of different names of oncology practices. Okay, so it's not incredibly obvious that all this is U.S. Oncology because it all has different names. Okay, next up, it's 1,200 doctors. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of doctors. It has 470 locations. They treated 1 million patients last year, according to their website. Okay, now, how does this relate to McKesson? So McKesson is the Fortune 500. In fact, it is one of the largest companies in America. It is a drug distribution company, and McKesson, Amerisource Virgin, and Cardinal are the three big ones, okay? So we've talked about McKesson in previous uh, videos. Now, isn't that interesting? McKesson owns U.S. Oncology, so a drug distributor owns a massive chain of oncology practices. Why is that important? It's because in oncology they do in-office infusions and in-office injections, in-office infusions of, of chemotherapy and various other medications, and injections of things like Neupogen and EPO for low white blood cell counts or low red blood cell counts. Okay, so now McKesson bought U.S. Oncology for $2.2 billion in 2010. It is a part of, U.S. Oncology is a part of the quote-unquote specialty distribution segment or division within McKesson. Okay, so again, this is within, they're lumping a physician practice within drug distribution. So let's look at the math to identify the conflict of interest here. Okay, so let's just say that the, the medication that they're infusing costs $1,000 a dose. And oh, by, by the way, that is a super low estimate. And let's just say that the person requires five doses per year, which they could require more than that. Okay, now let's just say on the distribution side, right, so there's obviously a, a markup for being the middleman for just, so not the pharmaceutical company, not the end physician's office, but just the distribution itself, separate from U.S. oncology, just the distribution, okay? Let's just assume there's a 10% markup. That means a thousand bucks a dose times five doses times 10% gives you $500 per patient per year. And we said that there were one million patients a year treated by U.S. oncology. So. 500 times a million, million patients is $500 million a year that could be coming in from just the distribution alone. Like, this does not even include the markup from the physician's office themselves when they bill to the insurance, which I've talked about in previous videos how that happens. Okay, so just in the distribution business alone, there's $500 million a year in revenue. Now, granted, McKesson makes $208 billion dollars a year in revenue. So it's still a very, if these numbers are correct, which again, it's just an estimate, that's a super small number of their overall revenue. But the point is, is that U.S. oncology is incentivized to increase the price per dose. It's incentivized to increase the number of doses, and it's incentivized to increase the number of patients in order to maximize revenue and maximize profit. Uh, profits. They have a responsibility to their shareholders. McKesson has a responsibility to their shareholders to increase the, the cost per dose, to increase the number of doses, and to increase the number of patients that receive these medications. Okay, so I'm not saying this is illegal. I'm just saying that that's how the money flows. Okay, so now I will leave you to judge what you think of all this. However, we've, known, we've seen a conflict of interest between Optum and United Healthcare. We've seen a conflict of interest between DaVita and Haven Healthcare, the Amazon Berkshire Hathaway Chase um, organization. And now we're seeing another conflict of interest. So I think it is important for us to say, okay, when we are examining healthcare, let's look for the conflicts of interest because there might just be one. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.